All right, friends, let's keep the ball rolling with fairly vague and poorly documented HTML elements. This time we get to talk about the figure and its best friends, the fig caption and images and some other things that go in figures. All right, I'm going to share the screen again. We're looking at a very, very familiar scene, the hero section that we have been working on. And we see right here that we have an image. Now, the figure element is a semantic element that essentially denotes a figure, as you would maybe expect. And the use case of what should be a figure and what should not be a figure is where we immediately get into a lot of gray area. Now, my argument, because here I'll just tell you right now, like, it well, wouldn't it be nice? Wouldn't it be nice if the rule was literally just, is it an image? Put it in a figure. Wouldn't that just be fantastic? I think that would be absolutely fantastic. But, you know, a lot of people like to argue about this kind of stuff. Now, I personally don't think that we really need to argue about it all that much. And I'm going to make my case. I'm going to give you the arguments. I'll let you decide for yourself. Now, if we look at the structure that we have created so far, we had a container up here and we need these two things to be side by side. So we put one div for the content, we put another div for the image. Now, we don't want this div to be an image. We want it to be a figure. We actually have a new feature in Etch where I can right click and I can say wrap in figure and it will wrap the image in a figure tag. We also made it so that when you add an image, it automatically adds it in a figure. And if you right click, you can remove the figure if for some reason you determine I don't actually need a figure there. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna go up to this container where I need my second div. And if I was really doing the construction of this area from scratch, I would just hit the image here and it would give me the figure and give me the image. Now, according to the spec, there is a child of the figure called a fig caption. And so for sure, here is a good rule. For sure, anytime something needs a caption, you should use a figure. And so it's not just images that go in figure. Videos can go in figures because they can have captions. You can put charts and graphs in figures. You can put block quotes in figures. You can put multiple things like a before and an after photo inside of a single figure kind of denoting that, hey, this is a figure that we are looking at here. It's not an image over here and an image over here. It's two things that belong together, a before and an after, and those can have a caption. I think you're starting to see the value of a figure tag. Now, here's the thing. A fig caption is not required. A caption is optional. I tend to think that anything of importance, any visual of importance, another rule kind of in the spec is, could you extract this thing and go put it somewhere else, right? Um, and, and, and would it need to be described like with the caption, for example? That means it's a good use of a figure. I mean, to me, any image of value right, can be extracted and used somewhere else. If you have an image of uh, an Apple watch, like a lot of people could take that and go put it over here and it still makes sense if it flows in their content or whatever. Uh, but th this is the vagueness. This is the, the gray area where some people would say, no, 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 that's just, it's just an Apple watch. It doesn't need to be in a figure. And you're, look, you're not putting a caption, but then I look at the spec and I go, but the caption's optional. And so if, if, if it had to have a caption, they would have made that the rule, right? That would, that would have been the requirement. Now to me, there's a secondary there's a secondary purpose here for the figure. And I've actually said you should always put your images in figures for two reasons. One, you could need a caption at some point. And at that point, when it's already in a figure, you just pop in the caption, okay? Because the caption, I'm gonna show you here, I can right click and I can actually add a caption, just boom. Bing, bam, boom, you're done, okay? So we, we just put the caption in. It is a child of the figure and it goes adjacent to the image or the video or the quote or whatever happens to be in here that you wanna caption. And then of course you can easily remove it if you don't need it. So point here would be if there's ever a time where you need a caption and you haven't created a figure yet, you now have to wrap an object in a figure tag. This could affect your styling. It could potentially break your styling or cause a refactor of the styling to have to happen. 
it, just have the figure in the first place because the truth is, honestly, at the end of the day, that figure does not hurt anything. That figure does not, if this is a meaningful image and not a decorative image, if the image is purely dec decorative, it probably shouldn't be an image to begin with, okay? We'll, we'll, we'll get, we need to talk about that. We'll talk about that in a moment. So there is no harm to wrapping this in a figure. You get access to a caption should you need a caption. Also, you get access to grouping with more, more images that need to be seen as one visual, okay? That is a possibility when you already have the existence of a figure tag. You already have that grouping context. And then much, much, much more importantly, I have argued, because it is very common to attach various accent pieces to graphics, to images. And images, the image tag, okay? Let's go over here and look at the image tag. And we can go over here and we can look at the code, the image tag, I-M-G. You know, we haven't talked about it specifically yet, but images do not support pseudo elements. This is a big, big, big limitation of images. And it is very often that you need to attach pseudo elements to images. And so in order to get access to pseudo elements for an image, it must have a wrapper. A figure serves as a somewhat generic wrapper that allows you access to pseudo elements while also giving you containment context if needed, while also giving you the possibility of adding a caption if needed. And a caption, by the way, doesn't always go below. If I click caption, it's gonna put it below, but I can easily use styling to place this as an overlay on top of the image. You will see that very often. That's not just dummy text. That should be a fig caption inside of a figure. That is the proper way to do that. So to me, every image that is a real meaningful image and not just decorative should be wrapped in a figure and it gives you all of these possibilities and has no downside and has no cost. Okay. So if we have a situation that we have analyzed and we say, wow, that's a very long pros list. And oh, look, the cons list is essentially empty then we're in a situation where we don't have to debate anymore. Let's just go that route and live our life, okay? And so that's exactly what we're doing. So we have a figure wrapping our image. Now I wanna talk about images in general for just a second. I'm gonna go ahead and click the source here. I'm not gonna do an entire module on image performance and we're not gonna go into all the detail about all the different image formats and all that stuff, okay? That's a different discussion for a different time. But what I will say is, we need to make sure that if it is a real image, this is a real image of Bali, okay? So this is not just for decoration. This is communication. An image is worth a thousand words. I'm sure you've heard the saying before. Therefore, this needs to be a real image. Some people will add a box and they will add the image using CSS, using styling as a background image of that box. That is completely wrong. That, that method of adding an image is only for images that are purely for decoration, purely for decoration. So think about if I had an image that's like a striped abstract background or something or some sort of texture or overlay or whatever, those are obviously purely for decoration, okay? They are not communicating anything. Therefore, you should add them with CSS. When an image is added with CSS, and when we get to the styling, I will show you the actual code. But look at this. I'm going to save. I'm going to refresh. We're going to inspect. This is a crawlable, indexable, readable image. Screen readers know it's there. They can read it by reading the alt attribute, and all images that are communicating something need to have an alt attribute. We'll talk about that in just a minute. But this, the search engines can index this, they can read it, they can crawl it, they can use it for communication purposes. If you use styling, CSS, to add a background image, that image is effectively invisible. It is invisible to screen readers, it is invisible to search engines, it is invisible to AI, it is invisible to everything and everybody except cited users. Any image of value needs to be in an IMG tag. And then we learned the principle about figures. You are going to wrap 
that image in a figure, whether it needs a caption at the current time or not. Those are the general rules that I would recommend. Let's talk about alt tags, okay? When you add an image in Etch, we are gonna give you a blank alt. You can fill in a manual alt. You can also grab the alt dynamically from the WordPress database so that the alt tag is actually managed in the media library from right here, okay? Whatever method you would prefer, you can do. There's also another feature of images in, on the modern web called source set, S-R-C-S-E-T. And you do that by choosing the optimal size. This is going to be a fairly big you know, use case of this image. And so when I'm looking at my options, I'm saying, hey, 1536 is gonna get the job done for the layout that this is gonna be in. And then what source set does is it, and you have to kind of know a little bit about WordPress as well. When you upload an image, it's going to actually create a bunch of versions of that image at various sizes, okay? And then what source set does is it says, hey, the optimal image size is this, but depending on the device size, here's a bunch of other options and the browser uses that data. So if I'm on a phone, the browser knows how big the phone is and the browser sees the list of options of the images. And instead of loading the full resolution image, it chooses the much more smaller and appropriate resolution for that device that the user is on, making the page way faster for users on that device. Whereas on a desktop, it's gonna serve you the full res version of that image that I chose, 1536. Okay, and it's not fully full res, but it's gonna choose that uh, maximum resolution that I set for people on desktop devices or who are actually needing those pixels because of the size of their screen. So source set is a very important, and again, we're not going into all of the details here. We're just scratching the surface of the most important things. Source set, very important. Alt tags, very important. What is an alt tag? An alt tag is a description of the image. The easiest way to manually set alt tags in Etch is to command enter on the image. That gives you access to the attribute bar, at which point you are going to say alt equals, and it doesn't matter that there's already an alt there. This will just replace it, okay? And so you're going to say um, beach shoreline in Bali, okay? And you're just describing what the image is. And then you don't wanna be overly descriptive and you don't wanna be too generic, but I'm showing it's a beach, it's a shoreline in Bali, and I could put Bali, Indonesia. Is that where, I'm pretty sure that's where Bali is. I would, again, I went to public, it's on the other side of the globe. I'm gonna go ahead and hit save, and then we go refresh on the front. And now if we inspect this, we're gonna see that things have changed in the code. So we have all of this source set stuff loading. We have a alt tag right here, beach shoreline in Bali, Indonesia. This is how screen readers and crawlers all read what this image is and have an understanding of this image. And that is only possible because it is a real image. So this is kind of the summary, okay? Figures can be for Lots of different things, block quotes, code blocks, videos, images, groups of images, you understand, especially if it needs a caption. If it needs a caption, it should absolutely be in a figure tag. It, figure tag, I'm sorry, a fig, yeah, it should be in a figure tag with a fig caption. Too many figs in my life right now. Um, it doesn't need a fig caption. It is not a required element inside of a figure. You should wrap all images in a figure is my argument because of all of the pros that and, and opportunities and flexibility that that affords you, especially with regard to access to pseudo elements and it costs nothing at the end of the day. If you have a purely decorative image, then very likely it should not be a real image. Um, if you do need to use a real image element for a purely decorative image, you should remove the alt tag. You should also probably mark it as aria hidden. Um, but again, th there's a lot of details here that we don't really need to get into right now. These will pop up later as we do more real world build type stuff and 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 encounter more real world scenarios. Uh, but but I think that's enough for now. I think that's enough for now. And I, I just don't know what the, the retention rate on this course is going to be uh, outlandishly low.